entertainmentbuddha.com. Welcome back to episode four of the Clustercast. Uh, I am your host Enrique, and I got my co-host, Mr. Nick Smythe or Smith. How do you pronounce your name again? It's Nat Smith. You got both parts of my name fucking <laughs> wrong. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Is this our wacky intro? <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> I have to, all right, so we can redo this. We'll, we'll fix it. No, first. no, okay. keep it. That's funny. Keep it. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> all right. Well, we're. We're here to talk about E4, so... Yeah, whatever that is. Uh, I guess it's some <laughs> video games or whatever. I don't know. Fucking nerd shit. Yeah, apparently something got announced. But uh, yeah, I mean, E3 this past week, a lot of cool stuff, a lot of good games. Um, was there th- I mean, we're not going to really do a recap because I'm sure every site and their mom has kind of covered it by now, but were there any titles that kind of jumped out at you just off the bat? Uh, well, I will say that I'm excited about Final Fantasy VII Remake, and at the same time, like, sort of disappointed that apparently it's, like, it's episodic, or, like, there's a base game, and then, like, the DLC is just a continuation off of the story, but apparently, like, the the base game, the shipping is just in Midgar, but it's, like, 50 hours long, but in the original game, it was, like, five hours long, so I, I don't know how that's going to work or, like, how much freedom they're going to give people. Like, I don't know if it's going to be, like, Final Fantasy fifteen, where it's just, like, a total, like, bro dude road trip and you can just cool. do whatever. You, it would be cool. It would be cool to do that with Final Fantasy seven cast because they're probably the... Yeah, it's fucking moot point to say they're the most iconic characters in the Final Fantasy, whatever. But like, they're cool. <laughs> I would like to go on a road trip with them. It'd be cool. I mean, like, I think because it's been years since I've played it, but I remember like Midgard being kind of like a pretty big backdrop because it kind of sets up the whole, I guess, like the tone of the game going forward. Yeah. Because the idea, like, you're in this big industrial city, and I mean, you're introduced like the whole Shinra Corporation and Avalanche. So it, there's like a lot of background to explore, which I think is what they're doing. They mentioned they're just kind of flushing it out, giving you more space to kind of go around in the city rather than just be like restricted to that one one or two wards you were in. And I think they're going to like focus and build up more of the conflict with like between Avalanche and Shinra. So which is, I mean, it looks, I'm sure they could flush it out to a point where like it'd be really interesting because I mean, Midgard's one of those places that it's just really fun to explore and I wouldn't mind seeing more of it. But what killed me is like, I work as a project manager, so the fact that they couldn't even give you an estimate to, like, how many games would be, it'd be one thing if, like, oh, yeah, you know, we're releasing this as a trilogy, and each game will focus on a section or, like, a part of the game. I'd be like, oh, dude, cool. Right on. Let's do this. But they're, like, very coy at first about, like, oh, we don't know yet. It'll, you'll just have to wait and see. And I think as more people press them, they're like, yeah, we just really don't know. Uh, it's It depends on how much we kind of, like, want to expand things. And then... Like, that project manager side of me is like, oh, my God, you guys have no fucking idea what your scope is, do you? Which is, like, it's kind of scary because I have no idea how long that's going to take them then in that case. But who knows? I mean, it could turn out to be, like, one of the greatest games in our generation. Or it could turn out to be a clusterfuck where it's, like, split between game generations and all that stuff. So who knows? Yeah, I mean, well, Final Fantasy fifteen. I didn't... I didn't even get all the way through the base game, but I followed, like, the story of the DLCs and stuff that came out afterwards, mm-hmm. and, like, they got through, they had a, a, a quote-unquote episode, which was, like, a DLC where you would play as each of the other dude bros in the group, rather than Noctis, and... Right. um then they were like, "Oh, we're just we're just getting started. You know, we got episode Arden and episode this and that and the and then the uh, uh, Japanese man whose name escapes me left uh, the project, and they were just <laughs> like, well, fuck, I guess we're just gonna do episode Arden and call it quits. Sorry, like, oh god, I'm so terrified they're gonna do that. They're gonna get two thirds of the way through Final Fantasy VII and they'll be like, well, 
our project leader left, so I guess we'll just stop making it. Yeah, or they'll just kind of rush it, and then we'll get, like, two really well-fleshed-out, like, amazing stories, and then the third one that's just kind of like, all right, let's just wrap this up because we just want to go home. Yeah, the last one, they just, like, I just skip everything, get to Sephiroth, and, and put a $15 price tag on it, and it's good. All right, we're good. We'll fix it in post. Yeah, we'll fi- fix it in post. We'll fix it with a patch. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I'm excited for it, but like you said, I, there's that little part of me that's very hesitant to, like, I don't mind paying for it, but I just really want it not to, like, go by the wayside. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna buy it because I'm a fucking loser, but I Damn want it to be, weeps. I want it to be good, and done. I, I know, man. It's, uh, I mean, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. They haven't really disappointed yet with the Final Fantasy franchise. Like, there's been one or two of them that may not have been everyone's cup of tea, but overall, look, like, the games are pretty consistent in terms of keeping their quality. Yeah, and I mean, most of the other stuff that they put out is also good, too. Not even just Final Fantasy, you know, Dragon Quest and oh, stuff yeah. like that. That's all under their scope. I think they, they published Just Cause, which, like, those games are pretty good, too. Yeah, that's true. Just Cause, they're, they're fun as hell for no other reason than just because you can do anything. Yeah, I think they also published, um, or actually, that might have been Bethesda, Rogue Warrior. You remember that? Rogue War. Oh, wait, was that like the old PS2 game? No, no, no. It was it came out in like 2012 on Steam only and it was like it was this really bad third-person shooter based on these books by this guy called Dick Merchenko. Oh, and I remember the fucking you're like the Navy SEAL or whatever. Yeah, he's like he's like knockoff Tom Clancy basically, and like yeah. every time you do anything in the game, the character is just like eh, suck my cock, call me bastard, just like shit like that. Uh, I remember that. Yeah. Oh man, for a second I, I thought you were gonna talk about like a much better game. Like, uh, was it Rogue Galaxy? Oh. <laughs> no, we're not. We don't talk about good games. <laughs> that game was fantastic. I was like, yeah. I don't know. I had nothing but like positive like association with the word rogue because of Rogue Galaxy, but now you just fucking think that's thank you. Yeah, I think I played that a long time ago on my Twitch channel. And Dude, it was I, a great game, man. No, no, no. Rogue Warrior. That was not a great game, No. Man. <laughs> it was like, I thought it was going to be fun. Like, ha, it's going to be fun to play this bad game. And then I got like three hours into it. I was like, I want to kill myself. This is <laughs> what? terrible. I've made a terrible mistake. Yeah, a really terrible mistake. Yeah, man, there's those, there's those games that are so bad that you get some level of enjoyment out of it because it comes full circle, and there, there's other games that are just, like, objectively bad, and, like, there's no saving grace whatsoever. No, not at all. They're, like, not even fun. Like, there's some games, like, you know, there's games that come out once in a while, like the Goat Simulators and stuff. It's like, okay, you made this game so that streamers and YouTubers could play this and have yeah. a good laugh like that that was the whole point of making this game whereas stuff with like rogue warriors just like there was no point in making this game <laughs> <laughs> this like you you took yourself way too seriously and thought this game was going to be way better than it is yeah I, I just remember the end of the game is like i didn't realize the game was ending and then you just like jump out of an exploding building uh and land in some water and then some navy seals pick you up in a boat and you're like yeah all in a good day's work, roll credits. I was like, what? They probably thought I was going to be some kind of like pseudo badass, like ending like off to the next mission. Heroes don't get recognition. Yeah, off to the next like, mission, <laughs> but I really hope there's no next mission. Oh man, that's, I am sorry you had to put yourself through that. Yeah, I'm stupid. <laughs> yeah, we've all been there. Mm. Whew, I mean, um, other games that stood out, I mean, for me, uh, Cyberpunk obviously is a huge one. Uh, Dude, fucking Keanu Reeves threw me the fuck off. That was incredibly surprising. I hope he just kills the main character and then we play as John Wick. <laughs> I wish. I mean, dude, this kind of brings up an, an interesting point, though, because, like, how do you feel about, like, spoilers just in general when it comes to, like, the gaming industry, like, leaks and things like that? Leaks or, like, trailers? What leaks, I guess? Like, people leaking, like, the new sites leaking information or, like, leaking reveals? Because, I mean, like... I had no idea whatsoever that Keanu Reeves was involved in any way, shape, or form with, uh, like, Cyberpunk. And then seeing him walk out on stage was, like, super fucking awesome. Like, oh, my God, hey, it's Keanu Reeves. That's cool. But then seeing him as a character in the game, like, brought that all together. It was, like, this really 
cool moment of excitement that like i feel like if that had been spoiled it would have almost like taken a little bit away from it absolutely would have i i think i think there are those that enjoy leaks because they like to see that and like challenge it like but is that really gonna happen and then when it does happen, it's like oh my god they were right but whereas like for me like i know that sometimes those leaks are right like to a t like describing like you know gameplay mechanics and stuff like that and Mm -hmm. then like i read it and i'm like i wish i uh found this out at e3 and not on this fucking reddit post yeah and and i I can't really describe it because it's weird because there's certain things that for me are kind of more part of the experience where like in that specific scenario like seeing keanu reeves and finding out he's a character and like that it was a really cool experience to kind of see in the moment yeah, and had I read about it like ahead of time, I would have been like, "Oh man, look, look yeah, okay, that, that's cool, I guess." Yeah, I mean, it's weird. I uh, I didn't know that. Uh, I don't know if there was a leak for it or not, but I didn't know that Banjo Kazooie was gonna be in uh, Smash, and seeing that was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" See, I remember. See, and for me, I remember reading like leaks about that. So like, hearing it confirmed, I was just kind of like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, I. It was. It was. I think honestly, like the more fun part of that is watching the reactions to it. Yeah. Of like people in what was it like uh, Nintendo New York was like hosting uh, an event there where you could watch the uh, what is it what the what the hell do they call it their Nintendo oh like their live stream or whatever yeah like whatever Nintendo Direct Nintendo Direct that's what it is yeah yeah they, they hosted like you could watch it inside this room filled with people and just watching everyone like go ballistic and lose their fucking mind over banjo kazooie was like that's cool that's wholesome yeah i mean I, and i guess i don't know it's like it's a completely nonsensical explanation for it that there's just certain things that for me i really want to get the chance to experience them experience them in the moment with the community rather than just kind of reading about it ahead of time yeah or even like you know new consoles and stuff like that um hearing about that ahead of time it's like man that's like that's a big thing i want to hear about it you know where it's supposed to come from yeah i don't know yeah it's weird i mean it's for me i can tie it back to like uh what is it and like avengers endgame oh yeah where i normally don't really care about superhero movie spoilers because i know how they're gonna be it's like okay you know like they're pretty formulaic i don't really care but for that movie in particular like no man like I want to see this opening weekend. I don't want to hear anything about it. I don't want to spoil anything. I just want to kind of experience that. So, like, with, when it comes to games, there's certain aspects of gaming that I care about that in that sense where, like, a console release, I for, for me, that's not one that I really care about, but certain games, seeing, like, like characters coming out. I mean, uh, Legend of Zelda is like Breath of the Wild 2, dude. That was an awesome reveal, and, like, I don't remember seeing anything, like, about it. And it was such a cool like moment just to be able to experience that like right then and there. Yeah, when I saw that, uh, I thought it was just gonna be like an accolades. They were gonna say like, "Oh, Breath of the Wild has sold ten million units" or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, know. or like some random DLC or something. Like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Now it's it's ten dollars for today only, and they're like walking through the cave. I was like, I don't, I don't remember this. I don't yeah, remember right? this at all. <laughs> and they're like, "Wait, is is that is that is that Ganondorf? Wait, what what?" Yeah, though I didn't even like I, that. Like happened so fast that I didn't even like register that that was like Ganondorf's like dried up corpse. Yeah, and it was cool. Like, um, because I think immediately afterwards, like people, you know how people always start like theorizing and stuff, and like the, people were kind of breaking the trailer down. They pointed out that that looks like actual like Ganondorf, like the human Ganondorf's body. Mm. He's got like the jewel on his forehead. He's got like the earrings he wore, and like it's got a very similar design to it. It's just been like sitting there desiccated for who knows how many years and i guess that's part of like the twist to it yeah because i i actually and i don't watch analysis stuff very often at all because i just like, I'm like eh, i don't care enough but like this one i was like i am interested to see what like you know uh, legend of zelda files you know like think about this because i was like i played breath of the wilds but in like I, like I played it way, way after it came out. It's like I knew everything that happened. I was just right. like, yeah, this is fun, but like uh, I feel like I, again spoiled it for myself because I'm stupid. Um, <laughs> uh, but then I was really interested. I was like, this is creepy. This is cool. I haven't felt creeped out by a Nintendo trailer 
like ever. So I I, I want to. I want to see what people are thinking about this. And as they were saying that, like, that Ganon was the Ganondorf from Twilight Princess because he had, like, the head jewelry and stuff. Yeah. Um, which is like, oh, that's cool. Okay. Right. And I like, it looks like, I like that they're going to be taking a darker tone to it, it looks like. Because mm. it reminds me a lot of what they did with, like, the difference between Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time where... The game just did almost a complete 180 in terms of tone. And I don't know, man. Like, Majora's Mask is probably, like, one of the Zelda titles that stands out the most to me because of that. It's so unique in that sense. Not just, like, the time travel mechanic, but the actual just overall atmosphere. And just based on the trailer alone, it looks like they're kind of following that same path, which, I mean, I'm already psyched for. Yeah, I mean, uh, all the all the Zelda games kind of, like, if you hold a magnifying glass to them, they they can all be taken in a pretty like dark tone like post-apocalyptic even like the first legend of zelda you think about it like it's basically post-apocalypse there's no yeah, there's yeah. no people left the only people you run into are hiding in caves and then every, every dungeon that you go to is like blasted to hell and torn apart and stuff but you don't think about it when you're playing it because it's like oh look at the bright colors and the silly little monsters that i'm attacking <laughs> and you like pull back and it's like oh this game is kind of fucked it's like doing like a deep dive into pokemon lore and you're like oh this is great world and oh, that's weird there's no adults this, 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 right <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um yeah. what else uh the other zelda the link's awakening looks great oh yeah i mean and honestly uh i don't know why but it got all, it, i guess it's been getting some backlash for the art style but that reminds me about what is it a uh, wind waker when that first came out the backlash that got and then that ended up being one of the most endearing zelda titles as well yeah i mean it's link's awakening is it's just a it's just a different coat of paint on the same game it's gonna do great but people are gonna love it yeah but i mean it's I don't know, like, I think first impressions matter a lot. Uh, speaking of which, I mean, Code of Paint, the Avengers game, it's been getting trashed because of how weird it looks. But I recently read an article that I guess the, some people showed some leaked footage, like gameplay footage, uh -huh. and the reception's kind of a lot more positive after that. I but thought that again, game looked fine. I think that the Avengers... I think it's just because we're used to seeing the cinematic universe avengers so it's like yeah okay they look like walmart great value versions of the hollywood you know movie stars but like that's fine I, i'm not like mad about how they look they look like people yeah know. and then actually that was actually something i was thinking about too that i feel like because the marvel universe has been such a big part of kind of everybody's just in the forefront for so long that's what most people associate marvel characters with so seeing a game like this where the characters aren't like carbon copies of the movie it feels like they're almost like a cheap knock like you said like a walmart brand knockoff yeah but i mean like scarlet witch i mean i'm not scarlet witch sorry uh black widow looked i mean her costume is pretty similar to what she wears in the comics it's the colors are toned down but she's got the same little outfit style hmm. iron man's armor like the faceplate has has a little bit more of like the defined edges that it does in the comics thor same deal um hulk is the hulk Captain looked a little weird, but I guess they're going for a more, like, military kind of look to him, because it looks like he's wearing, like, a flak jacket almost. Yeah, I mean, if you look at, like, the Marvel games that have come out and been popular since the cinematic universe started, they're always depicted, like, kind of hyper-cartoony, like Marvel Ultimate yeah. Alliance 3, that's, like, it's really cartoony. The Marvel vs. Capcom games, they're cartoony. They don't, Sp like... I mean, Spider-Man is cartoony in a way yeah even that too well that like i think they can get away with spider-man because people aren't so picky with spider-man i don't know what it is people are like not very picky about what spider-man looks like i think that also is because there's been so many different spider-men yeah i could see that because i mean i'm peter parker is like he's a he's a Early to mid twenties, average looking white guy. Wow, that's hard. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, there's only so many ways you can kind of like change the formula up without be, you know, just putting in someone new entirely. Yeah, I mean, Tobey Maguire in Spider Man Three looked like a tub of fucking curdled mayonnaise. That's oddly specific. He he looked like a sack of potatoes in that movie. 
<laughs> okay. He looked great in the first two, and then something happened in the third one. It's just like, you all right? Are you like using your proactive? What's wrong with you? Venom happened. Oh, toe for grace. I I don't even know. And you know what? Side, this is like a complete sidetrack, but the Venom movie was not terrible. The new one that came out with uh, what's his name as Eddie Brock. Uh, uh, I can't remember his name. Shit. Mad the, Max. Uh, Mad Max. <laughs> that guy, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy, yeah. Dude, I mean, the movie wasn't terrible. It's like, a, if you think about it as like a space buddy cop movie, it's fantastic. Mm. You know, and they laid the groundwork for Carnage too, right? That was like the, the, yeah. the Easter egg at the end. Oh, it was a terrible looking Easter egg, but yeah, they did. <laughs> uh, spoiler alert, but you have, uh, was it Woody Harrelson? Yeah. With a, the, the worst looking toupee I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I think I've only seen like a picture of it, and I was like, Woody Harrelson is Cletus Cassidy. I mean, he which just... could work because uh, if he plays, this, I mean, he's essentially the same character he pour, he played in what like Natural Born Killers. That's true. I just when I think of Cletus Cassidy, I think of a spindly little like Jim Carrey. You know, yeah, or like the Joker without face paint, kind of. Yeah, I could see that. He's see, I, the... I always thought of him like a little bit more eccentric, almost like an Ace Ventura kind of like. Yeah, big teeth. Just super, like, outgoing and, yeah, creepy to the point. Yeah, that's, I, I don't know, Woody Harrelson is a little too thick for me. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, anyone that hasn't seen uh, the Venom movie, you should do yourself a favor and definitely watch it. It's, it's a great, like, buddy cop movie. I'll yeah, probably um, give it a whirl. Yeah, you should. Other than that, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of stuff that came out of E3. Um, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, like things that excited me, because for the most part, it was a lot of the Nintendo titles, honestly. Fallout 76 think... Battle Royale, huh? How about that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although I'll say this, uh, Todd Howard, I think, has a good sense of humor about himself, so he was able to kind of go on there on stage and, you know, just admit, hey, we fucked up. Thanks for the feedback. You know, like we're focusing on the game, and I think everyone loved him for it. Yeah, I, I, I was also kinda, think that the initial, like, hate blast is over for that game, so... Yeah. I was kind of hoping, like, in the back of my mind that he would... You know how, like, the, there's, like, Skyrim meme that goes around? Yeah. Where, like, a, randomly fade to black, and then, like, you wake up and, like, your trip to Helgen. Right. I was, like, hoping that he would troll the audience by just putting that up, like, on the screen. <laughs> He's like, look at our new game! And they just have, like, that have the opening beat to that. Uh, that would, yeah, is <laughs> our first gameplay of Elder Scrolls Six? Wah. Be like, God, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, but I mean, like, it's it's good to know that they can at least take themselves, you know, like take a joke and not take themselves too seriously. They admitted that, hey, you know, like, the game wasn't perfect when it came out. We've improved it. Thanks for sticking it out. So, hmm. have they improved oh, it? Like, do people play Fallout seventy six still? I haven't like given two shits I about it. I mean, from what I've read, yeah. I mean, they've added a lot more stuff. People are, like, a lot happier with the game. So it's not, you know, super perfect, but it's mm. definitely way better than it started. Yeah, I feel like every time I heard about it, it was just, like, they added this pay-to-win microtransaction. Isn't that fun? Like, <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, speaking of developers, uh, did you hear about the, what is it, uh, Hello Games? Those um, are the, the people guys... that did No Man's Sky, right? Yeah, I mean, people, I guess uh, some of the fans got together and, bought a billboard out for them just to kind of say like thanks for everything you've done really that was kind of like yeah i mean i thought it was a kind of a cool like gesture it's obviously be the the game community being what it is you can't have something wholesome without people complaining about it hmm. so i mean there's a lot of people that are kind of saying like you shouldn't have wasted your money like they fucked you over they lied to you blah 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 and like they only what what was it they're basically saying like that you shouldn't be thankful to them for giving you what you they were supposed to give you in the first place. Eh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I I waffle on things like that where it's like, hey, the game's good now. It, it should have been good at the start, but at least we have a good game now, I guess. Yeah, and I'm kind of in the same boat because... Not that this is any better, but they could have just as easily said, fuck you guys, and ran off with the money and not really bothered. But, I mean, the guys stuck around. They It shows that they actually have pride in their work because they didn't just abandon it, even though they got a lot of negative like 
like attention like from publicity and the fans themselves but they stuck it out they worked on it and they improved the game overall and i mean for me that's like hey you know what the money was already spent off this game it was shitty when it came out they that could have been it but they at least improved it and now it's to a point where like it's really enjoyable to play so hey kudos to that yeah I guess now i'll never get to uh play no man's sky ironically for a bad <laughs> game <laughs> The game is is actually really fun now. So I mean, it's definitely one of my one of the more favorite kind of like space exploration games I've been playing. Yeah, when I saw the trailer for was it No Man's Sky Next or whatever, the like, yeah. once they like really revamped it, I was like, wow, okay, I would I would play that if someone gave it to me for free. Uh, did you uh, speaking of other space games? Did you see trailers for Outer Worlds? Yes. What did you think on that one? Uh, I think it looks fine. Okay, so like, it was a little like lukewarm to you too. It was uh, I um, yeah. <laughs> so man, I was trying to explain this to somebody because like, there, I love Fallout New Vegas. I thought it was like a great game. It's one of my favorite ones, and I think it's, I mean, it's I think the general consensus for people is it's closest to what the original Fallout series was. Hmm. So a lot of people enjoyed it. So. When they announced that, hey, Obsidian's working on a new game in space, people were like, oh, that's going to be awesome. It's going to be like New Vegas in space. And then they show the trailer, and people were like, oh, it's New Vegas in space. And <laughs> I was trying to explain... And, like, yeah, it sounds contradictory. It's like, what the hell? But I was trying to explain to Buddy, like, that the mentality behind that is that when people, at first, when they're praising it, saying, oh, I hope it's like New Vegas in space, they're talking more about, like, as a whole, like, the tone and the general feel of New Vegas. Right. That... Like the freedom, the quirkiness, like that kind of freedom of choice and agency your character had where you could kind of go and do anything. They wanted that in space. But then when you see the trailer and you get the reaction of like, oh, it's literally New Vegas in space, it's kind of like, it's a letdown because with one, you're expecting them to take those really great systems and improve on them. Yeah. And with the latter, it's almost like they just put a fresh coat of paint on it and they're giving you the same game. So it's like, oh, I mean, I could just go back and play New Vegas if this is all you're going to do with it. Yeah, I mean, I guess the uh, the value in it lies in I want to explore this new world with the gameplay of New Vegas, supposedly. I'm sure there's got to be a, at least a couple different things in it. I, I can't... I would be flabbergasted if it was just, like, straight up a ripoff of New Vegas. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure they've improved on it and stuff, and I'm really hoping, but... I guess there was that feel that, that feeling when the game first showed the trailer ID three that it's just a I don't know it seemed okay it's just nothing mind blowing with as like when it was first announced. I think the problem too with like when you have post apocalypse and then you have space stuff a lot of the time unless it's like a seriously developed planet or something like that like pandora in borderlands like it just it's just gonna look like the post-apocalypse again but on a different planet you know what i mean right. it's like yeah. yeah it looks the same there's a bunch of shit everywhere there's like you know ghouls quote-unquote ghouls there's gonna be like some kind of space zombie thing there's gonna be little mutated animals that you know they're a different species or something but you know the classic big bugs and you know rats and shit like that it's just it's the it's a, it's a trope of those games yeah i mean you're not wrong not that i'm like using that to defend it or anything i i sh certainly hope that it's more than what we're saying it is or more than we think that it is Ugh, excuse me um no no but it's true i mean there's always that concern that it, like you said it's going to be just another space you know, like apocalyptic kind of thing. Mm, you know, it's funny actually. Um, I was uh, covering news posts like a few weeks ago, and I got assigned something for. I thought it said Outer Worlds. This was before E three, and I was like, "Oh, they're revealing something about uh, Outer Worlds before E 3 This is weird." And then I realized it was the Outer Wilds. Oh yeah, I remember there's some confusion game. about that. Yeah, and I, and I uh, I watched the trailer for it, and I was like, I am like more invested in this dinky little indie game than I am about <laughs> Outer Worlds. It was really cool. It was like really like wacky, like um, 
uh, different like species and stuff on these like little like planetoids kind of they weren't like full okay. planets they're like little mini planets and there's like people you could talk to on them and i guess like puzzles and stuff like that and you could like launch yourself to other little planetoids and there's like uh, some like mystery and intrigue and i don't know if there's some kind of like ancient civilization kind of thing because at one point you're like standing on this planet and it just crumbles underneath you and you look down and there's like a black hole and you just start like floating towards it and it's like whoa and the trailer ends so it's like oh, that's that intense. looks interesting i like that it looks weird and i like weird stuff yeah, see, and like it goes exactly like you know it could have been a very simple like a very cliche. Oh, hey, so you're a space exploration slash survivor, but they took a really cool, unique angle and adopted it to it. So I think that's kind of what a lot of people are hoping that they do with at least outer outer world worlds. God, this is gonna be an issue. But <laughs> and you know what the like sad part is is that I remember that trailer for Outer Wilds really well. I don't remember jack shit about the Outer Worlds trailer from E3. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, I can't tell if the trailer I'm thinking about it was the one they showed at E3 or if it was just the one they announced way back like last year. So it's like, eh. like the like the reveal trailer. Yeah. So I mean, I guess that goes to show you just that lukewarm reception it received, which I mean, it's not a bad thing. I'm sure they'll pull it off. But was that it's... the Game Awards that they announced that? Because I don't think it was E3. Was it? I don't know. Because I, I think that Fallout 76 had been out for a bit, and I think they took a jab at Fallout 76. I think they definitely did. You're right. They definitely took a jab at, like, because they mentioned, like, yeah, I think, I want to say they did. Was it E3? I don't know, because E3, Fallout 76 hadn't been out yet. Yeah, so I don't know. Well, because I remember, I remember sitting in my girlfriend's room and we were watching the Bethesda E3 conference. I think that was the only conference that we caught live last year. And they show Fallout 76 and I was like, yeah, Country Roads, take me fucking home. This looks awesome. <laughs> and the game came out and it was like... <laughs> womp womp. Yeah. Sad. I know. And then like it, I remember because I, I was really sick when they announced it first because Country, Ho- Country Roads, you're like, oh, hell yeah, let's do this. Oh, they are the masters of fucking finding some old ass song and making a trailer around it that's perfect. Like when they did the Wanderer for Fallout 4, I was like blasting the Wanderer for like two months. I was <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, dude, I mean, they know how to hype up a game, which is, I guess, kind of the problem nowadays with like the gaming industry. Yeah, it's certainly true. They know how to like hype the fuck out of a game, but I mean. And that doesn't really do a anything. Big poop, right? Oh well, uh, could have been worse. Could be better. What else? Everyone hates uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield, so that's fun. What they hate it? How do they hate it? Uh, a, a lot of the stuff that I've seen is just like how it oh. doesn't look remotely close to being like it. It shouldn't release when they say it's going to release. I. Re- I don't remember hearing that, but I did read there's a lot of backlash about the Pokedex. Oh, something about, yeah, there's, like, no national Pokedex? Yeah, there's so, like, you're just, limited. There's, like, 450 Pokemon in this game, and, like, that's it. Which, I mean, that's not a bad thing. I, 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 I'm wondering if it's going to be, like, you have to transfer the Pokemon from the new game to an old game question mark to like I don't know because like, people are going to want to have all however fucking many pokemon there are 950 or something at this point i don't know yeah i know um a big th- uh which i didn't really think about it until somebody brought it up but like a big issue that people kind of have with it is i think last year when they released let's go eevee mm. and like let's go pikachu yeah they announced, they kind of said, like, oh, we're getting rid of, like, the Pokemon bank service, and we're doing, like, the, I forget what it was called, but it was, like, the pay service, where it's, like, a paid subscription where you pay to keep your Pokemon, and then you can upload your Pokemon online and go back and forth from those. I think but, it was, like, you. it was combined with Pokemon Go. As, it's, like, Pokemon Home or something like that. I yeah, think. something like that. Yeah, but, like, the whole point is, like, you're paying money to as like for Pokemon storage, and... At that point, it would let you transfer your Pokemon back and forth from, like, different generations, which is great. And then suddenly, 
this this one comes out and then that has nothing to do with the previous games. So people are kind of like, so why the fuck was I paying money for this if I can't even carry these over? Right. Uh, uh, some of the stuff that I saw was um, like the presentation of the game does not look amazing so far for being like the first one on the Switch, like a new generation of Pokemon. They showed like the <laughs> the animation for like the attacks and stuff. And Still it's looks kind of like, eh? Well, it, it's, it's nothing. Like, the Pokemon is just, like, in their idle animation, and they, like, wiggle a little bit, and that's the attack. Right. And, like, that... But, like, previous generations, they had, like, unique animations for certain kinds of attacks and stuff, so people are like, why the fuck does this look so bad? And I saw some, like, screenshots of the, the overworlds and just how, like, some things just don't load in and stuff like that like character oh, no. models of like other trainers in the overworld don't load in until you're like kind of close to them and it's like what? breath of the wilds ran on this thing how how is pokemon having a hard time with this hardware i just uh all i remember seeing was like the trailer where you had like that machoke just chasing you down and people are like oh god yeah <laughs> i don't like that <laughs> i'm a machoke bitch See, this is my time to finally get up on a pedestal and tell everyone that Digimon is better than Pokemon. <laughs> Digimon is better than Pokemon, and we need a new fucking Digimon world if we'll ever get it. Who knows? But... We, got the, we got the next order, like, three years ago. Eh, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It was weird and really hard. Well, yeah, well, that was the game that didn't fucking explain anything, right? They explained almost nothing. I had to watch so many tutorials on YouTube. I was like, how the fuck am I supposed to get my Digimon to digivolve into anything other than a pile of Poop. shit? <laughs> yep. They all, yeah, because they don't... Yeah, dude, that game did not hold your hand whatsoever. No. I, remember, I remember I tried playing it. And I got increasingly frustrated because I just felt like I was beating my head against the wall. That game was brutal. Well, the training is brutal, too, because like in the Digimon world... The original one, your stats could go up to either 999 or 9999 for your HP and MP. But in this one, everything goes up to like 99,999. It's like, I, my Poke, I, Pokemon, my Digimon are going to fucking die before I can get them to that point. Right. Like you can't train often enough to have like really powerful digimon. i don't know if that was the point whereas like you can't just have like overpowered digimon but it's like fuck me i would like to try yeah i mean don't put that in front of me if you're not gonna let me achieve it shit yeah they're like oh you're the more digimon you raise that die the next egg will be slightly stronger but it's by like two percent or something like that it's like uh, th that's a lot of hours to put into this game <laughs> I'm really disturbed by, like, the slow progression of eugenics they're kind of keep introducing in these games. Yeah, there's some... Yeah, <laughs> slow... I I think it's because I'm a shitty grown-up now. But, like, when I see shit that's, like, 80 hours of gameplay, I'm like, uh, oh, I guess I better not buy that because I'm never going to finish it. Uh, dude, I hate... That's one thing I hate about getting older, that there's all these games that I want to sink my teeth into and play... Mm. but the fact that it takes so long for a lot of them, like, oh, it's a 120-hour game, and, like, part of me goes, oh, fuck, yeah, I'm, I'm ready for this, but in reality, I end the up playing maybe... you are. <laughs> yeah, I end up playing maybe, like, 10, 15 hours. I'll put it down. I'll, pay, I'll play another 10, 15 hours. I'll put it down, and then I'll come back three months later. I was like, I have no idea where the fuck I am. I gotta restart this. Yeah, or another game will come out, and you'll start playing that. <laughs> Uh, dude, be, uh, aging and gaming is just so hard to balance sometimes. Unless you work, like, in the video games industry and, like, even then. Yeah, I mean, dude, like, work, even working on, like, a 9 to 5 commuting, coming home, having to take care of, like, adult responsibilities. I mean, and I, I often have to make a choice, like, all right, do I want to game or do I want to just sacrifice a couple, like, or do I want to sleep a little bit? Right, but I was like, I mean, just going to work... Coming home and working uh, out and then eating. Congratulations. Yeah, then, you now have three hours left in the day to do, you know, writing or editing our Let's Play or doing this podcast. Or I'm like, how the fuck does, did the people do this? I don't understand. Yes. Yeah, so, and uh, my, what I end up doing is like, you know what? 
fuck it, I'm going to do it. I I can shave off a couple hours from my sleep and then I do it and then I regret it the next morning for the, like a good five to six hours into the day. Yeah, it takes like almost half the day to get your fucking like your first wind, let alone your second wind. Yeah, dude, man, I think the last time I did like a hardcore power hour was uh, when Halo Four first launched. Oh fuck yeah, dude! Uh, I remember three buddies and myself. Um, we had like a marathon session where like we each brought our Xboxes to one of their houses. We all had like a, our own private monitor, mm. and we set up like a little like I guess a Wi-Fi LAN party in this in like in his basement. And we played that game on, like, leg- was it Legendary? Yeah. From that Friday to, like, that Monday or Tuesday, because we had all taken off those two, <laughs> like, for the five days. Uh-huh. And I think that was just a, a fun memory, but I don't think I'll ever be able to do that again, just because I don't have the energy in me. No, I mean, like, yeah, Halo 4 actually, funny story about that. Halo 4 came out, I was in school... And also, it was voting day. <laughs> oh. Guess who didn't vote that day? <laughs> you voted for Halo. I <laughs> don't kill me, anyone who listens to this, because I just turned 18, and I was like, fuck voting. Like, Halo 4 just came out. Like, a dork is going voting today. Right. <laughs> uh, oh, man. That I, game was great, though. Totally yeah. worth it. My friend, his uh, Xbox had just died, so he pre-ordered the Halo 4 Xbox. Oh, he got the nice one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all like see-through and stuff, and when you like hit the disc tray button, it makes like a do 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 like noise. It was like, this is fucking sick. <laughs> uh, and yeah, we sat in his room, locked the door, and played it on Legendary. I think we beat it. It took like 10 hours, but we did it. Um and we <laughs> around like the five hour mark i was like boy i sure am thirsty i'm gonna go get some water and i opened the door to his room and his dog is staring me in the eyes taking a dump in the middle of the hallway <laughs> and i was like ryan your dog is pooping in the hallway and he's like shut the door <laughs> like oh we'll get it later yeah like, all right never mind i won't get water now oh uh, yeah dude all we did was like sit in his basement and like we were smoking cigars just eating junk food and like his festering wife. yeah we were just like festering and wallowing in our own filth and his wife walked down she's like oh god <laughs> i smell nothing but just ass. gas Be- it smells like a high school locker room right here oh man minus the axe yeah minus the axe spray which is terrible <laughs> Uh, good, uh, good old day. I think I also skipped on voting for Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Uh, shame on them for making voting day the release date for those games. See, if they make voting day a holiday, then it'd just be a lot easier because then you could manage your time better. It would. I could manage my time better. I could play Halo 4 and go vote. <laughs> See? <laughs> God oh, help man. If those were fucking, the days. If Halo 6 comes out on voting day, I, uh, it's going to be a tough call. <laughs> we'll see. The, the, like, uh, future the of the country, is, future yeah, the of the US, US is in rough shape, but uh, hey, low. I know. Uh, who's who's worth more? Uh, me. Oh man. Oh, uh, actually, rat tangentially related. Um, I'm not going to explain my thought process. Just take my word for it. But okay. I did want to talk about one thing um, that's semi serious, but. There's been a couple articles coming out recently, and I think most recently um, on Monday, Time like Time Magazine released an article about game developers and how game developers are just completely burnt out uh, in the industry. Did you uh, get a read chance to read that? Uh, I did not read that, but I've read other stuff about that from other outlets in the last like year or so. I think I think right around oh what was it was it Red Dead Two they were talking about how they yeah. were working like 80 hours a week to get the game out on time and it was like uh that's like, not cool yeah but i remember they were bragging up like they were saying it like in a way like they were bragging like oh yeah we're working you know 100 hour weeks and we're gonna get this game out and i remember when it first announced people like i guess they meant it to be like a sign of pride like yeah we're doing overtime for this for you guys but i think like by then there's ripples of the community going like oh that doesn't sound healthy yeah, good to know that your fucking employees are, like, dying at their desk. <laughs> right. And then I think shortly after, you had, like, the Jason Schreier releasing the article in Kotaku about, like, where Anthem went wrong. And then they kind of talked about all those issues with development and mismanagement and 
like the idea of the Bioware magic, which, you know, a lot of people will like blame Bioware saying like, oh, you guys fucked them over. But that Bioware magic, I mean, it's it, that could just as easily be that Rockstar magic or that, F, you know, that Gearbox magic or like pick a studio and chances are like they follow the same kind of mentality. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's I'm and I'm sure that goes back quite a while. You know, big games having a crunch to get out on time, you know, stuff like you hear about all the time, usually after the fact when, you know, a game comes out that stinks and it's like, right. oh, they pushed it out too fast. Let's think, you know, Sonic 06, Duke Nukem Forever, yada, 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 all those the, the historically terrible, terrible games that are victims of time crunches and, you know, we got to get it out for the holiday season so all the little stupid kids can buy it. Yeah, we need the money, but I mean, it, it's not just for bad games though, too. I mean, for great games, it happens too. And it, I think the issue is though that, like, crunch time isn't like a one-off where, oh hey, we fell behind, we need to get this done. It's, it's seen as like an industry standard at this point. Yeah, it's really uh, fucked, and I think that's why a lot of the best games now come out of really small studios. You know, stuff like, you know, The Messenger from last year. Yeah, like, that's true. How, how many people made that game? And I'm sure they made it like totally on their own time. Yeah, no, yeah, and, but and I think yeah, because I, I think they have the luxury where like they don't necessarily have a release date where they're beholden to or even like shareholders. They're just like, hey, we're working on this. We'll get it done when we can. And it yeah, well, ends that's up being that's, better that's for the it. Uh, the CD Projekt Red mentality, right? Like it's done when it's done. Uh, actually, CD Projekt Red has, I think, uh, suffered the r same thing, where like overburning its uh, its developers too. Is it? Yeah, uh, I'll so. have to find an article link it. But yeah, I remember reading about that too. That they're actually another company that where their employees are working. I mean, you know, 70, 80 hour weeks just to like push those games out, and it's it's not sustainable in general. Fuck, man, they make like one game every six years. Relax, <laughs> right? But I mean, dude, it's, I mean, it, it seems like it's a bubble that's about to burst. And then most recent you had, a uh, was it Jocelyn Monaghan and Emma, and I think Emma Kinema, or I think it's pronounced. Enema? Kin, not Enema, Kinema. <laughs> I mean, if, please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but um, they I were. Don't, I don't think it's Enema. <laughs> <laughs> they were talking at E3 about uh, uh, unionization in general for game developers. Um. I think they were two that talked about like some of the toxicity within Riot Games and having to deal with like not just sexism but just general hostility like from upper management as well. How like it's it's so pervasive in the culture, right? And I mean, it I think it ties into it where like the idea of like maybe it's we're getting to a point where like game developers need to start unionizing or something because it's something is going on where it's the strain starting to be felt and it you're seeing it in the cracks. Yeah, man, I just, I what blows me away is I don't know where in the life of these, like, upper management people, they just suddenly, like, stop being human and right. decide that, like, everyone beneath them must, you know, forego seeing their families and shit like that. Like, well, you know, it, it, you just need to work, like, 15-hour days. Like, it's, it's fine. Just, just it's, do it. It's weird, man. Um, I'll say this, like... From a technical project manager's perspective, there's I've seen it happen where things get out of scope because they're being mismanaged because there's either poor communication or you have too many cooks in the kitchen and no one can agree on anything. But things happen and it's rarely like a moment where someone goes in and is like, you know what, I'm going to be a fucking dick from now on. It's like a slow build up that it happens so gradually that and even if people notice along the way, nobody stops it early enough, and it just kind of snowballs downhill. And by the time you realize that it's like nine o'clock on a Friday night, and you're still at work, you're like, "Shit, man! Like, why did it get to this point?" Right? Yeah. Why? Why that extra half an hour that gets tacked on? You know, every few weeks. It's like, oh, well, you know, this week I stay until five thirty. Oh, no, six o'clock. Oh, seven o'clock. Oh. Just kind of like like you're saying, just spirals out of control. Yeah, I mean, it's. It, something's gonna burst at this point i feel like which is shitty i feel like we might have a problem with some release of some big budget triple a games for a few years if something like that happens 
But the good thing is that it's 2019 and everybody and their mother is making fantastic video games. So I don't think it's going to be like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like the 80s where we have the fucking E.T. problem. Oh, like what? Uh, one second. Well, yeah, I mean, the, like the graveyard full of E.T.'s because it was just a shitty game that wasn't that like the like almost like the the proverbial albatross that signaled like the the burst like the the gaming industry back in the 80s like that gaming crash yeah it was like single-handedly through well okay not single-handedly i don't want to put all that on it but it was like 80 to 90 percent of the reason that video games almost just stopped being a thing and then nintendo was like yo hold my beer i'm gonna make this fucking nes and it's gonna rock your socks <laughs> Oh, maybe that's maybe we need something like that to happen. Just something kind of like to change the status quo. Because right now, it's like you said, it's something's gonna happen, man. Yeah. As does Nintendo have this problem? I don't ever hear like things like that coming out of Nintendo. No, I mean, if anything, Nintendo uh, was it Miyamoto that is quoted with saying that hey, like a good game will was it a, a delayed game will eventually be good, but a rush game will forever be bad. Yes, that's true. I. I feel like we said that before on this podcast, yeah. or maybe. Probably. I mean, remember, Nintendo's also the company where, like, its CEOs take pay cuts if... It, I think when the Wii U didn't like, sell as well as they thought it would, or it was... I don't know if it was the Wii U or one of the DSs, but instead of laying people off, the CEO, like, decided to cut off, like, to cut off their own... Sorry, that sounds really, really dark. <laughs> no. I was like, go <laughs> on. They cut off pay- their what? <laughs> they decided to take a pay cut rather than, you know award themselves a bonus and fuck everyone else over. They're like, hey, we didn't make our like our quarterly projection, so I'm going to take the brunt of it since I'm the leader. But I think that's also the culture over there where it's like, you know, you lead through example. Yeah, speaking of uh, money and Nintendo, did you see this shit about their stocks? How it fucking dropped one billion or something because of Pokemon? Because of Animal Crossing. Oh, because it was delayed? Yeah. That Well, hey, now is the time to buy Nintendo stock, I'm going to tell you, because... I sure is because when those games come out, that stock's gonna go right back up. Exactly. We we know how people are. Yeah. I. You know. Uh. I think. That's like, ridiculous. Speak, speaking of delays, Metroid Prime. Is that even out anymore? Like, is that even like a thing? Yeah. They uh they said back in, what was it January maybe that uh-huh. they were like uh hey we fucked up Metroid Prime Four it stinks so. We're bringing back uh, retro game studios to make it not suck. And they're starting over. Sorry. God, it, it feels like at this point it's just like lost to the wind. I don't know. I mean, we we only got one teaser for it before. So I, I, did, I don't know how far along they were with it. I would like to oh. think that they were less than, you know, like halfway. <laughs> less than three probably less than three i mean nintendo takes a while with their like big big games yeah that's true like when did they announce uh breath of the wild like 1999 or something i think so or came out. it's probably yeah i mean there's some well, ungodly like time before it came out I, that's when they first started talking about it too because i remember reading an article on game informer where like the developers saying like oh you know we're gonna we're changing the formula up we're not ready to talk about it, but like we don't like where the game's heading, so we really want to change things up. I right. mean, they I did think, a good job, but I think it was the launch of the Wii U. They were like, "By the way, there's a Zelda game coming out at some point for this thing." Maybe that's what it was, yeah. And I just kind of, like, you know, pushed back that, till whenever. Yeah, that was the thing. They were like, "Look, this shitty console, but it's gonna have Zelda at some point." I mean, dude, Zelda, Mario Kart, or like. And Smash Brothers, like the two huge sellers. Yeah, I um I liked Super Mario 3D World. I don't think a lot of people liked that one, but I liked it. Super Mario 3D. I don't remember that one. That was the one that was like it had kind of like not isometric perspective, but it was like sort of kind of top down. Sometimes it was four player. Mario game. It was like Mario, Peach, Luigi, and Toad. Oh, and it okay. had like it had the cat suit. Yeah, I remember that one, yeah. You climb walls and, like, pounce on enemies and stuff, and 
It was fun because like you, the game would hand out one ups like candy, and so yeah, okay. you know when there's four people, you're dying constantly because you're getting lost with who you are. I mean, people think Smash Bros can get confusing with four or more people. That game was a mess with four people, but it was fun. I remember that ruining families because of that shit. Because trying to jump and then hitting somebody and smacking them into the wall or something. Well, you could also just pick people up and throw them off the edge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, why would you do that? And if they weren't Peach, they couldn't, like, come Fly back as Peach yeah. could float. Oh, uh, that fucking sucks. <laughs> uh, uh, they need more co-op games. Yeah. What What were we talking about originally? E3. E3. Uh, oh, yeah, just E3 It was the original one that we got sidetracked. Because, I mean, it's a cluster fuck of a podcast, so... Um, yeah, good night, everyone. Thanks for joining the podcast. Make sure you follow us at Entertainment Buddha on Twitter uh, and uh, check out our YouTube channel, also Entertainment Buddha. Uh...